Ati Allah, Ati Rasul Ulu Ramri Minkum. Always a reminder for myself and Abdul Ajis, a da'ifu, a skin, a wuzal, a jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that is still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us a life to enter into the fourth lunar month, Rabbi Thani, and four times the reality of nine, opening the secrets of the number 36. Alhamdulillah this is uh, the immense blessings of Surah Yaseen dressing this holy month in this way of Shams al-Arifeen, twelve veils into the reality of the heart, Divinely heart and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So we have the reality of 36 for this month, 36th name Bismillah al-Ali the Most High. The 36th name of Prophet that opens that reality, Al-Muhi, the reviver, Muhi al-Qulub, the one whom revives and revives the heart most importantly. Surah Yaseen, its dress and its reality and the dhikr of Allah eternally upon the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad is Subhana Rafi al-Ala. Glory be to the elevated and the most high, means the immensity of that eternal dress of Allah upon the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad And we went from last month of Tahseen from 27, Surah 27 into the reality from that Divine the fire into the heart of Holy Qur'an because now this flame and this reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad's Divinely lights and lights of eternity begin to define itself and dress us upon its reality. And alhamdulillah this month opens the reality of Surat Yaseen and the blessed name of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Yaseen And this has an immense dress of Holy Qur'an we described before from that flame of Divine the Presence. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's now becoming more clear for us that this is the dress of Holy Qur'an that Surah Yaseen and Sayyidina Yaseen is salam is the heart of Holy Qur'an, is the heart of a Divinely speech in which Allah is a hidden treasure and wanting to be known speech is the attribute of knowing. Allah cannot be seen, Allah has no likeness but Allah granted creation Divinely speech that by virtue of that speech Allah the Creator will be known. Granted that honour to the ancient reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that Nurul Muhammadi is an ancient, ancient creation and ancient light. By virtue of that light Allah wants to be known. Allah will be known by the best of His creation, most perfected of His creation, most blessed of His creation. And alhamdulillah for the nation under the flag of the best of creation, 
And we said many times, people ask, oh Shaykh you're not talking about all these things that are happening, <laughs> I don't know where they've been for the last 20 years but we have never stopped talking about it. So our whole life is to teach about akhir zaman our whole life was to teach about the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad and akhir zaman and that people have to die from this dunya so that they can reach to their heavenly reality. And this is Mawt Qabl al Mount. And the only way to reach to this world of light is that the world of form, its illusion is broken. So the tariqahs and our shaykh and our shaykh's system has never stopped talking about the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. It's just people have never heard. They have ears but they don't hear, they have eyes but they don't see. Only now as things becoming a little bit more excited and uh, heated they start to, huh? They hear better now because you have their attention, their dunya collapsing. They see better now because they see fire and death is imminent. And this unfortunate for people who have to have a life is, is reactive. We said there are two types of people, one whom is proactive means all their life was in preparation for their hereafter. So they live their life accordingly, they do good, they speak good, their good actions because they want to meet Allah in the best of conditions. Then there are people whom are reactive and they do whatever they want and they react to panic, calamity and excitement. And at that last minute as in the moment of their panic like chicken without a head running in every direction, most likely the wrong direction because this is the danger of reactive characters and reactive people, you don't know what triggers their reaction. Do they get frightened and run towards somebody with uh, shots that they want to heal them with because they're panicking? So knowing many people they get it like it's a new pair of shoes, the latest shoes. As soon as they say, we have this thing to give you, they line up thinking it's the greatest thing and then they text you, they got it, they got it, they got it. Like, Astaghfirullah, Allah preserve you and protect you, this, you know, this is uh, insanity. But these are reactive characteristics. Although they may think they're preparing but no, they're reacting to fear. And the tariqah comes to teach. This life is, is about your death and how are you planning for it? We said that a person whom doesn't write their last chapter is a, is a book not worth reading. If you're planning on just taking your life chapter by chapter, let me sort of write what I'm going to do this year, maybe we change it for next year. And then by the third year you don't know where you're going, you don't know where you've come and, and what's going to be happening with your existence. But this way of rijal, the men of God which can be either male or female, doesn't matter, it means mature in Divinely way and in Allah's way. The way of the rijal is that they live a life of preparation, that they physically prepare and spiritually prepare. Physical preparation, they live a life in which definitely things are going to be difficult. <clears throat> do you have food at home? Do you have safety and batteries and oil and, and provisions that are necessary like a little market in your home? <clears throat> do you have these provisions set aside for a time of difficulty? Have you set aside some money? some gold, something in the event of things collapsing. There becomes all sorts of physical preparations, preparing yourself, preparing your understanding, your ability to survive through difficult times, this is a sign of faith. These were the people whom when they follow tariqahs 
They don't follow their head. Oh Shaykh, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, this life going in another thousand years, this has always been like this. But that's not the point, this has always been like this. Your death is tomorrow, uh, who knows how long they're supposed to live. Is it tomorrow? Is it next week? Is it next year? We live our life as if death is tomorrow. Are you prepared? Do you have your estate in order, your will in order, your life in order? You're good with Allah and are you good with Sayyidina Muhammad Means they're proactive people and that's why they follow a shaykh and the shaykh teaches them. And as a result they live a life of preparedness that these days are inevitable and my death would come at any time regardless if it's catastrophic events or messianic events when Messiah is appearing and the world collapsing. Spiritual preparation is through their talks. So it means anyone making comments and internet comments and what about this, what about that, they really haven't been studying and these are more political arms of extremist groups that want to get a rise out of people because this shaitan. Shaitan sparks extreme emotion, extreme anger, extreme in any type of activity like bipolar, extremely depressed, extremely happy, extremely angry, extremely whatever. Those are like a bipolar in spirituality, they're going up and down too much. When you reach taslim, taslima is, is, is a, a beautiful state but through taslim you can reach taslim. And this beautiful state of taslim and patience is achieved through your spiritual practices when they follow the shaykh. So it means pay no heed to political people who probably don't have faith, they speak a lot about pushing people into the fire and to get in trouble and to politically become active which is not the way of tariqahs and uh, Imam Mahdi is not coming through a billboard or through a TikTok. Or there's some kids were telling me there's a TikTok where somebody's interviewing and saying, now he's Imam Mahdi and, and you have to please follow me and all the comments are crazy comments and yeah, <laughs> I don't think Imam Mahdi is going to come through TikTok. No of course he's not, you know, don't be a lunatic, he's not coming through anything like that. But he comes to those whom they are muntazir, that they are prepared and they're awaiting. So, Anyone who's followed our teachings for 25 years, it's all transparent, all on the internet. This is our life, is when you physically prepare and live your life in a prepared state that eventually something going to happen, any type of difficulty can happen and I'm going to die at any time. So my house has to be in order, my life has to be in order. And then they spiritually begin to meditate and practice and all of the practices then begin to make sense. Their meditation, tafakkur, their contemplation, their awrads, their zikr was for mawt qabl and mawt. You are supposed to come to this doorway saying, I'm nothing. We have 12 hijabs we have to go through every year. First hijab from the power of nine because this is the way of Sultanul Awliya, Shamsul Arafeen. So they go through the Holy Qur'an, brings them through Surah Tawbah. No Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem on Surah Tawbah because you're making Tawbah which you are supposed to put your head at the threshold and say, Ya Rabbi that make me to be halal for your way. That I'm asking istighfar and I'm putting myself on the line that take away my bad characteristic, take away all that distracts me from you and make me to be halal for you. So, no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And this is the whole system that awliya have put for those whom are on the way of this rijal. Not all are understanding. Some people may say, oh, my shaykh doesn't talk about that because your shaykh is not supposed to be involved in that. But this shaykh talks about it 
because this is the way of sainthood, this is the way of enlightenment and this is the way of tafakkur and contemplation to achieve a light within the heart of the servant and that can only be achieved through this process of tafakkur and contemplation. The state of contemplation can only be achieved when the servant agrees that they are nothing. They want nothing, they are nothing and that to put the self and the self-importance down. What Allah opens later that's something of a different reality. So we described in many different talks. Now Allah shows us every day this reality in nature. So where do we see it? In the seed. The seed is not what Allah was waiting for. So the seed, let's get a big seed so people understand, an avocado seed. This big seed is not what Allah was expecting that, you know, oh this is fantastic, this is amazing. Means the seed was only the beginning. Our life was about the seed coming into existence, agreeing to go back into the dirt. And taslim, submit, Islam is to submit and only when you submit you have peace. But 99% of people choose to remain in the state of a seed. They didn't seclude, they didn't do any tafakkur, they don't isolate themselves at all, they don't get to who knows himself will know his Lord. That's why Allah has tariqahs. Why? Because it's not meant for everybody. Allah says, none but know it except the men of tafakkur. None will know it except the men of tafakkur, means it's exceptional. And the people whom are guided to that reality to achieve it, they are exceptional people. It's not for the masses, it's actually for the minority. And those minority whom are inspired, they're inspired by what Allah wants that I created you the, and honoured you so that you would reach towards who you really are. Only when you take your seed and plant it in the Muhammadan soil, in the love and the ishq of Prophet is a Divinely soil that destroys and pulls apart everything false so that only the haqq can remain. Everything of this dunya and who we are is false, who we think we are false, who our mom taught us to be false. Everything will be stripped away and then what happens when you plant the seed? A beatific plant comes out. That's what Allah wanted, not the seed but the plant that grew. And if you water that plant with your salawats, your practices, your good deeds, good character that one day becomes like a tree bearing flowers. And those trees that are khawas and have specific realities they even bear fruit. And this is Allah's teaching, this is what I created you for not the seed. What can you do with a bunch of seeds? Nothing. You throw them at each other to harm each other. That's what you see on television now, harmful character, harmful words. People whom they told the world they were the enlightened ones seem to be the most harmful ones. That was the analogy of the lamps. Everyone wants to say they're the, the chosen lamp of Allah but the only reason Allah creates a lamp is to give light to darkness. Otherwise you're not illuminating the heavens and the angels, they already have light. So our life purpose and all creation's purpose was to be sent on this earth to become a shining lamp, Siraj al Munira, from the example of Prophet the only purpose Allah has for a spiritual path and enlightenment 
is not only illuminate yourself and attack people but to illuminate all of God's creation that are in darkness. And illumination can only come by good character, good deeds and good actions. And you're not illuminating the heavens, the heavens already has the illumination and lights. So means the purpose of humanity and spiritual humanity was to spread light, love, hope, dispel anger, fear and confusion. But the world is the reverse right now. So yes we did talk about it but people don't seem to have ears to hear or to eyes to see that's why we keep asking the questions. I think our people understand but the internet people which majority which are shaitans coming in and trying to rile people up and to make people to lose their light, lose their illumination and lose their connection with Allah because the opposite of faith is what? Anger. Opposite of faith is anger. Those who are operating from fear, from anger, creating hate, they are becoming darkened. And what even they think is righteous is not righteousness. Is shaitan just playing with you to darken you before the actual events begin? Before the party starts you will already be dissipate and disseminated and uh, destroyed. But what Allah wants for us, what Prophet wants for us, what awliyaullah have trained for all of those whom following is keep good character. Reach to your reality. The events in the news and on television should be motivating people to jump into the Muhammadan reality really quick. Nothing by looking at difficulty to motivate people, jump in. Jump in, start doing your practices, make your tafakkur, be charitable. All that you're trying to save up for is not going to help you with what's coming. Give food, give water, give good deeds, give wells, good, good actions and good deeds so that you can quickly reach towards your purity. If your purity requires so many actions and so many deeds and you're going to take a slow time reaching there, you may not reach what you're hoping to reach. Because you see that Allah is showing the end is very near. But when certain events happen the book is closed and there's no more chance for improving. When everybody sees everything is already destroyed, it's not the time that, oh no no shaykh I'm going to be more committed in my life. That time is finished. So what people should be thinking about is that all the signs of what the shaykh has been teaching are here. The characters are all on the stage and the events that are taking place they must take place. There's no, there's no need to go out and to stop Allah's will because you're coming against Allah. Everything is exactly as Allah willed it, their Messiah has appeared. They must take Al-Aqsa and that region. He must build his temple to say who he is and as a result great wars will begin. These wars bring the advent and the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi through miraculous and powerful realities. There is nobody who can even approach the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi without a level of purification. It will not be easy to achieve that, to reach that or to get near that. If the people of Bani Israel, they were not able to approach the Ark of the Covenant. So go back into our talks about the Ark of the Covenant was a box held by angels and had relics from Sayyidina Musa and the Torah, the commandments within it. That was so holy for them that their 
people could not even approach the Ark of the Covenant without being rabbis, without fasting for three days, without doing specific practices just to enter into the presence of the Holy of Holies. This was for a box and tablets. What do you think about the one whom heart is been purified by Allah and is the walking covenant of Allah Well they're searching for a box and hope that by means of a box and what's in that box they can achieve great miracles because their leaders are jinn but they're hiding themselves. They feel by that reality they can achieve what they have to achieve but unfortunate for them that the real covenant is the heart of the believer with the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet is the covenant of Allah And when you study the Lataif al Qab, the four angels that are guarding your heart from Sayyidina Jibra'il, Sayyidina Mika'il, Sayyidina Isra'il, Sayyidina Israfil and Sayyidina Malik in the center, these are the angels that hold the Muhammadan covenant and the heart of the Divinely Presence in which Allah describes, not on heaven or not on earth but I'm on the heart of my believer. They walk with the covenant of Allah and they walk with the angels guarding their heart and their soul. This is what they were in need of, not looking for boxes and relics. Those boxes and relics won't help them with anything. The believer is in need of opening their heart to the Divinely Presence with the key of Sayyidina Muhammad So we have the curriculum, there's the book on the meditation, there's the book on how to bring the energy, there's the books on the reality of the hajj, it's all a part of this curriculum of the ishraqiyum whom are supposed to be studying and understanding the reality to reach to their light so that they can rise. When the zulm begins to overtake the earth the sun will rise from the west and that's with an illumination in their hearts and that they have studied and understood and been dressed by that reality. The book on the Lataif al-Qalb is all about that heart and its covenant and its reality and all of its secrets. And once they understood that then the insana kamil then is the ultimate reality of, of the reality of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad that is all encompassing, all creation exists within Muhammadun Rasulullah So we pray that Allah give us understanding and increase our commitment, increase our zeal and himma in which to achieve these realities and bring out the perfection of these realities as uh, time is shortening and difficulties are coming. Those whom they do their practices and do everything that been prescribed they should feel a sense of security and tranquility within their heart. There's nothing to fear or to grief if one is existing within the heart of Allah within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because it's tranquil within the storm. As the whole of dunya begins to spin with the horrible tufan and difficulty the eye in the center of the storm there's peace. Means that through the Izzatullah, Izzat al Rasul, Izzat al Mu'mineen there's a tranquility. So we encourage people to do their practices, make their connections, read the understandings so that they have illuminations and lights to understand. Only in their knowledges will they have an understanding and sakina within their heart. And that's what is needed and this is what Allah means that the awliya they neither fear nor grief. Why? If they're in Allah's program, Allah's hands then what is there to fear and what is there to grieve? Because 
you're following Allah's command and whatever Allah wants for this dunya it will happen and whatever Allah doesn't want for this dunya it will never happen. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen Muhammadillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.